Now, I've tried a lot of note-taking apps in my time, probably more than I can even remember. But there's one app I keep coming to, and every time I revisit it, I'm always surprised. I always want to use it more, and that app is Bear. Bear is kind of like the more aesthetic, more secure child of Evernote and Apple Notes. It's really simple to get started with. There aren't any confusing bells and whistles, and it never gets in the way of your work. And in my opinion, that's really what a note-taking app should be. So in today's video, I wanted to introduce Bear to you. I'll share some features, what makes it different, and some pros and cons so you can determine whether this app would be bearable to you. Now, I actually started using Bear back in 2018 when I was working as a full-time software engineer. And I actually discovered it because I was uh, snooping at my coworker's screen during a meeting. But yeah, here we are today. So Bear was built back in 2016 by this really small team, just 17 indie developers based out of Parma, Italy. Which, besides Bear, is also famous for its architecture, music, art, prosciutto, cheese, and its countryside. So this team has been building a bunch of random apps over the past 10 years, with, let's say, varying levels of success. But they never gave up, and Bear was their first big breakthrough hit. And if I were to describe Bear in three words, I would say simple, secure, and minimal. First, the app is made for writing. Notes are formatted using Markdown with minimal styling that allows for highlighting, headers, etc., but nothing fancy. There are some advanced markup options like emoji shortcuts, drag and drop attachments, and inline code blocks. But for the most part, the experience is a lot simpler than Evernote or Notion. Bear is also private by default. All your notes are stored locally on your device, so there is absolutely no risk of your Orgo notes or soap opera watch list being leaked to the world. They also believe strongly in data ownership, that quote, your data is your data. And thus, notes in Bear are formatted really simply with just markdown and text bundle, and are exportable to nearly every file format imaginable. This prevents lock-in, which is basically being stuck with a certain app because it's so difficult to transport or export your notes. Bear is also very intentional about its product because they don't want Bear to be, quote, everything to everyone. And thus the features and the UI and experience are all very clean and distraction-free. You can toggle focus mode. It's on light mode by default for freaks like me. And there are plenty of keyboard shortcuts, so you barely have to use your mouse. Bear also has a very generous freemium model. Right out of the box, you get all the features, unlimited storage, and lifelong updates. The only thing you'll be missing is cross-device sync, which is available with the Pro plan for $150 a month. And even the inner cheapo in me can't really complain too much about that. And speaking of cross-device sync, Bear is currently only available on Apple devices, which is probably the biggest drawback to this app. So yeah, that's Bear. Pretty sweet, right? Now, with so many productivity apps out there, they can all kind of start blending together. So let's break down their differences. Of all the apps, I would say Bear is most similar to Evernote. Evernote definitely surpasses Bear in terms of its features, which have been developed for years and years. But Bear is a lot cheaper than Evernote. I'm talking $150 versus $8 a month cheaper. And even with its free model, Bear gives you a lot more power without any annoying paywalls. And it's a lot more minimal and aesthetic. Now, Notion and Bear are actually pretty different. Notion is more like a super-powered, all-in-one productivity app, whereas Bear is really just a note-taking app, but a really good note-taking app. And Notion is structured with databases, whereas Bear is more like a collection of notes that are loosely grouped with tags. Notion is also not end-to-end -end encrypted, and it locks you in a lot more. Bear, on the other hand, allows your notes to be stored locally or on iCloud, they can be exported easily, and they're a lot less susceptible to any type of data leak. Now, Obsidian and Bear both put privacy at the forefront, and they can both be made pretty minimal and aesthetic. 
However, while Bear is quite straightforward to set up, Obsidian has a lot more complex customization options, which can be a pro or a con depending on what you're looking for. Now, of course, Bear is not perfect, but I found that it has a lot of benefits. Now, when I was working full-time in 2018, I used Bear for everything, and it was so easy to use. I'd maintain daily notes to jot down tasks or record requests from coworkers and log progress to look back on in one-on-ones. I'd make meeting agendas and take interview notes and document break room gossip. And I could easily search my notes or share them on Slack. And nowadays, with increasingly complex apps that take hours or sometimes even days to set up, I really appreciate this simplicity. More recently, I fell in love with Bear for its writing experience. As someone who gets way too excited by fancy formatting and themes, I liked how Bear's minimal design kind of reeled me in a bit and helped me focus. And since I can get distracted by even a simple sidebar, I loved using the focus mode to write which I actually preferred to Obsidian. And despite its lack of advanced features, I love those small touches that made me just a little bit more productive. For example, you can drag and drop images into notes. You can aggregate your tasks in the to-do pane. You can use keyboard shortcuts like Control-1 to toggle focus mode, for example. I also made this custom shortcut in the preferences pane to create a new note even while I'm in another app. I also really loved this read time calculator, which helps prevent my type A self from going way overboard when writing scripts. Now, as a recent iPhone convert, I do admit, I really love how well integrated Bear is into the Apple ecosystem. I would say it's even worth the $150 a month subscription. I appreciate having access to my notes wherever I am, whether I'm at my desk or chilling with Yogi or going on a run. I also have to give bonus points for how young Bear is. Besides their active online community, this means that they're constantly developing new, innovative features and listening to our feedback. For example, they're building a new and improved markdown editor called Panda, which will have a cleaner UI, tables, a custom iOS keyboard, drawing features, GIFs, footnotes, folding, etc. Nice. And as an alpha tester, you can play an active role in giving feedback, which is great. That being said, I do sometimes wish there were some extra features. Besides databases, I rely on things like changing the color of text, toggling multiple columns, and templating for my YouTube workflow. Of course, I should remind myself that this isn't supposed to be Notion, so none of this should really be a surprise. I also don't love that the hierarchy structure in Bear is built off of hashtags instead of folders. For example, for this outline, I'd have to make a tag like hashtag YouTube slash Bear slash outline, and only then would the YouTube, Bear, and outline folders be created. Besides that, I also don't love the fact that they use iCloud to store your notes in the pro version. Not for any security reason, but because I just don't want to pay for another cloud subscription service. And I also hate, like really hate those little pop-ups that say you're low on iCloud storage. <sighs> But of course, the reason I make these videos is to help you pick the right note-taking app from you for from but for you from the get-go. So I suggest you get this app if one, you do a lot of writing. As I mentioned countless times, I think of all the apps I've tried before, this truly has the simplest, cleanest writing experience. Or two, if you want something simple, you can't be bothered with fancy setups and just want something easy to get started with. Or three, you want a cheaper, faster alternative to Evernote. Now, I might be biased, but Bear is 80% cheaper, looks more beautiful, is more secure, and is faster than Evernote. Or you want an app that's seamlessly integrated into the Apple ecosystem. Then this would be perfect. But this app is definitely not for everyone. Of course, if you don't have a Mac or all Apple devices, this is not gonna be ideal. I did read online that they're working on a web app version of Bear, but given their size, I'm not really sure when that's gonna roll out. But mostly this app won't be for you if you need those more advanced features. If you're used to Notion, you'll probably miss the databases, the different views, customization, and rich text formatting. And if you're used to Rome or Obsidian, you'll probably miss the seamless backlinks and knowledge graph. But with that in mind, if all you need is a really good note-taking app, 
like how I use it for my job or say for class notes or I don't know, maybe you're writing a book, then this would be perfect. So yeah, I'm a bit stuck myself with how I should use Bear going forward because I am quite locked into Notion having used it for one and a half years, but I also really like Bear, so I don't know. The uh, confusion is truly unbearable. But anyways, that's it for today's video. And if you have a suggestion for an app that you want me to try out next, please let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big like and subscribe. Follow me on social media if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, sweet, sweet like honey, honey. Pretty, pretty sweet. sweet. I don't know what to say. Bearable to you. <laughs>